judgment in the matters of Corha Storm Telecommunications and that of On Power UK Limited. Lady Rose will hand down the judgment. Mobile phone masts and their accompanying cabinets of equipment are familiar sights on our urban and rural roadsides. But few of us need to give much thought to the complex legal provisions that govern the agreements between the mobile phone operators and the owners of the land about that equipment. These three appeals concern the installation of electronic communications apparatus, which I will call ECA, by telecoms operators on land owned by other people. Digital communications are becoming ever more important in our lives. However, the telecoms companies cannot expect to own all the land on which the ECA is required to build their networks. These appeals address in particular when and how an operator who has already installed ECA on a site can acquire new or better rights from a site owner. Parliament in 2017 enacted a new electronic communications code which covers, amongst other things, the acquisition of so-called code rights by telecoms operators, enabling the installation and operation of ECA on other people's land. I will call this the new code. The new code replaced and made considerable changes to a previous version of the code, which I will call the old code. This is significant for these appeals because the relevant agreements in dispute in the three cases before us were all entered into under the old code. The shift from the old code to the new code was governed by a set of transitional provisions which specified when and how old code agreements would become subject to the new code. The appellants in these appeals are all mobile network operators. They have installed ECA on land, but now their entitlement to keep it there is precarious and they wish to improve their positions by applying for code rights under the new code. The effect of the Upper Tribunal and Court of Appeals various judgments in these appeals is that the new code prevents them from doing that. Central to these appeals is paragraph nine of the new code. This states that, quote, a code right in respect of land may only be conferred on an operator by an agreement between the occupier of the land and the operator, close quote. An agreement of this kind can be arrived at in two ways, either consensually by agreement between the parties, or, as was sought in these appeals, by the imposition of an agreement by the upper tribunal under paragraph 20 of the new code. The conclusion reached in the decisions below was that by virtue of its ECA being already installed, an operator was itself the occupier of the land. It was therefore both the operator and the occupier, that is, on both sides of the agreement envisaged by paragraph 9. As a party cannot make an agreement with itself, the decisions below concluded that it was not possible for the three appellants to obtain new code agreements. Part of the Court of Appeal's solution to the problems raised by this was to point to Part 5 of the new code. This provides for the renewal and modification of an existing code agreement when its term is close to an end. However, this provision does not enable an operator to obtain additional code rights during the lifetime of an existing code agreement. The main issue before the Supreme Court was therefore whether, in determining who is the occupier of the land referred to in paragraph 9, the word occupier includes an operator who is presently on the site as a result of having installed ECA there. The Supreme Court concludes that it is inherent in paragraph 9 when read in context that the operator seeking a code right is different from the occupier of the land. As such, an operator which has ECA installed on the site is not to be regarded as the occupier of that site for the purposes of paragraph 9 when that operator is applying for additional code rights to supplement its existing code rights. This is an industry where technology develops quickly and government policy is to encourage the rollout of new digital infrastructure across the country. It would impede the purpose of the new code if operators could not apply for the new rights they need simply because their ECA is already installed on the site. 
the bar on applying for new rights would also operate in an arbitrary way, because not every installation on e of ECA on a site by an operator would result in that operator becoming the occupier of the site under the test applied by the Court of Appeal. But there's no reason why Parliament would have wanted an operator who has to install a mast in a closed off area in a rural city setting and who is likely therefore to be the occupier of the site to be in a different position under the code from an operator who simply attaches an antenna to the roof of an urban building which is unlikely to make it the occupier of the site. The Court of Appeal's construction of the code would also lead to unnecessary disputes having to be decided by the tribunal about whether in any particular case the operator was or was not the occupier of the site. The Supreme Court also finds that there are other provisions of the new code which are drafted on the assumption that an operator can apply for new code rights even if they already have ECA installed on the site. However, the Supreme Court accepts that an operator can only apply to the tribunal to modify the terms of existing code rights once Part 5 becomes available towards the end of the relevant code agreement. This is because parties should generally be kept to their bargains and the new code should not be available to sidestep agreements which the party later regrets. What does this mean for the outcome of the three appeals? Although the Supreme Court has largely accepted the operator's arguments, this does not result in all the appeals being allowed. The cornerstone appeal is dismissed because it was Vodafone which was in occupation of the site and not the site owner Compton Beecham to which the operator appellant cornerstone had applied for the rights. The Supreme Court does not hold that all occupation of any operator with ECA installed on the site falls to be disregarded. It is only the occupation of the operator who is applying to have a new code right conferred on it which is to be disregarded. The on-tower appeal is allowed because on-tower's occupation of the land by virtue of its ECA being installed does fall to be disregarded and there is no other barrier to a code agreement being imposed under paragraph 20 of the new code. Turning finally to the Ashlock appeal, the distinctive feature in this appeal concerns the fact that the tenancy initially conferring code rights under the old code was protected by part two of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1954. This gives security of tenure to business tenants and permits the tenant to apply to the court to renew the lease when its initial term expires. The Supreme Court agrees with the Upper Tribunal and Court of Appeal that an operator with a subsisting agreement protected under the 1954 Act should not have the option of renewing the rights under the new code. An operator in this position should instead exercise its rights under Part 2 of the 1954 Act. However, it's not apparent from the description of the background facts set out in the judgments below whether the application made by Cornerstone in this case was seeking new rights or rather sought to renew the rights that should have been renewed under the 1954 Act. The Supreme Court therefore invites submissions from the parties as to whether the appeal should be remitted to the upper tribunal to consider this. The court will now adjourn.